सदाशिव सरंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यमा अस्मदाचार्यपर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा ओ परम वरिष्ठ ब्रह्मीष्ठ परमानंदिण परमानंदयति सद्गु प्रणतस्म्य हम so we have now come to the ultimate or the final aspect of the vedantic teaching so the teacher has presented the mahavakyam tatvam asi and that mahavakyam the final teaching we are analyzing now from verse 74 onwards which we completed in the last class and as i said shankaracharya has taken this mahavakyam from the chandogya 6th chapter so the teacher is father uddalaka the student is son swetaketu and the teacher said in the final you know the climax part tatvam asi and when you look at the background of the teaching tat refers to the creator god and because that's how the teacher starts the teaching there with srishti or creation so i also mentioned about indra virochana samvada saying that it is so subtle that indra had to go back and listen so many times etc so in that context i mentioned indra virochana samvada in the upanishad and i said let me get you the reference it is in chandogya upanishad in chapter 8 seventh section okay indra virochana samvada so that's just for people who are interested in the reference of course now we coming back to tat tvam asi we saw that uh, it is it is there in chandogya upanishad and we were discussing the details of it right so sadeva saumya idam agram asi ekam advitiyam ekam eva advitiyam right and then tadaikshata bahusyam prajayeti that is how the sixth chapter started started with srishti and uh, ishwara being the srishti karta so tat here refers to ishwara the creator god right so through shweta ketu every seeker is being addressed here basically so the word tvam refers to the human being who is an individual created thing and the creator god is tat created individual is tvam asi means you are right are so tat tvam asi means you the created individual are none other than the creator the god right so the student is not it's not easy to accept this right because there are so many differences between the two the created individual is a very finite and perishable jeeva right whereas the creator god is infinite and imperishable and he also has so many virtues like sarvagnya right sarvaga omniscient omnipotent omnipresent right so the student obviously has got all opposite qualities with very limited adjuncts right so how can these two diagonally opposite entities ever be equated is the question for that the teacher says there are primary meanings for a word and there are secondary or implied meanings when the primary meaning doesn't fit in properly don't simply reject the words or sentences why because these words are coming from the vedas that is from god himself therefore look for the appropriate secondary meaning and try to understand the teaching so the primary meaning is called vachyarthah the implied meaning is called lakshyarthah vachyarthe aikyam na bhavati if you take the vachyarthah the relationship is between what god swami and dasaha dasoham i am a serm, servant of the god so only if you take the lakshyartha the implied meaning you can say soham right vachyarte dasoham lakshyarte soham i am god you can tell and how to employ these two meanings that is what we are going through now and it's a very highly involved analysis right and we have to remember all the um uh, past classes what we learned and those themes and those explanations tattva bodha everything together right so what was the analysis the teacher says tvam you the created individual right 
And then when we remember all of the past teachings, then we remember that we are a mixture of Atma and Anatma. Even though I am one single individual, I am a mixture of Atma and Anatma. So, Atma, Anatma, Viveka, Panchakosha, Viveka, etc. We learned how to do it, etc. So, we also saw that my essential nature is Atma, the five-featured consciousness. And as Atma, I cannot do any transaction. So, I become a transacting individual because of the costume called Anatma. With Anatma, I am transactional. Without Anatma costume, I am non-transactional or transcendental. Therefore, I am a mixture of Atma and Anatma costume or I am a costumed Atma. So, whenever we study Mahavakyam, we must remember that Tvam is a mixture of Atma and Anatma costume. And the same thing we must remember with respect to the creator Ishwara also. This is the second extension that we saw from verses 66 to 73. Creator is essentially none other than Brahman. Satyam, Jnanam, Anantam, Brahma. Right? Brahman is the all-pervading consciousness, but Brahman by itself cannot do any transaction, cannot even move, cannot even think that I am Brahman. Right? Even though Brahman is consciousness, pure consciousness cannot think. Therefore, if Brahman has to function as a creator, Brahman also requires a costume. And that costume is Maya Shakti. And we elaborately studied Maya Shakti in Viveka Chudamani from verses 31 to 33. So, therefore, the creator also is a mixture of Brahman, the non-transactional consciousness and Maya, the costume. And I just want to remind you, this is what we quoted from Saundarya Lahari, right? So, what a, what a big profound essence is contained in the very first verse of the Saundarya Lahari. Shiva Shaktya Yukto Yati Bhavati Shakta Prabhavitum Nache Devam Devo. It goes like that, right? So, Shiva Shaktya means Brahman Shakti Maya. So, that is what we worship as God, as Ardhanarishwara, the man-woman mixture, the Brahman Maya, right? So, we can take it either as one as Brahman and Maya or you can just treat it as one of them, right? So, we generally take the male component as Brahman and the female component as Maya. So, the Ishwara principle is Brahman Maya mixture. Brahman is the essential nature of God and Maya is his costume. So, the creator Ishwara is also in a way costumed Brahman. Student is costumed Atma, right? So, the teacher says here, from costume standpoint, costume voice creator and created are diagonally opposite. Because Maya has got the whole creation in potential form, all possible knowledge, all future scientific discoveries, etc. Maya contains everything. Whereas the individual body, that costume is a miserable finite entity. right? So, if you look at the costume Maya and the costume body, there will be a huge difference, right? And unfortunately, only the costume is visible. Behind the costume is the consciousness principle, Brahman and Atma. Even though they are there, we are all blissfully ignorant of Brahman and Atma, the reality, right? So, it is exactly like watching a movie. Very good example this is, right? So, there is so much of fighting going on, fire, everything on the screen, right? We are so engrossed in the movie. But... There is a reality, a screen, which is non-transactional, which is not participating, which is akarta, abhokta, which is satyam, on which the entire moving movie is going on for two, three hours, right? But we never focus on the screen, which is actually on which the movie is being projected, right? So that is because mitya is something that attracts, satyam doesn't, right? So, here also when we say God or creator, that maya and its superior powers and virtues are prominent. But when we talk about the individual shariram, all the limitations like leg like pain, hand pain, back pain, etc. That is what is prominent. So, thus if you look at prominent maya costume and prominent anatma shariram costume, you will only see differences. So, that is the vachyartha or prominent meaning. Therefore, to understand the equation between Tatu and Tvam, 
may you come to the lakshyartha the implied meaning behind the costume and two technical words are used in vedanta the costume is called upadhi and the one behind the costume is called upahitam so maya is upadhi brahman is upahitam anatma body is upadhi atma the consciousness is upahitam okay so with this let us enter the it's a very very profound part of uh, viveka chudamani aikyam tayor lakshitayor navachyayo aikyam tayor lakshitayor navachyayo nigadyate nyonya viruddha dharmino nigadyate nyonya viruddha dharmino khadhyo dabhanvo rivaraja bhrityayo khadhyo dabhanvo rivaraja bhrityayo upam burashyo paramanu mervo so as i said the primary meaning is never intended here right the conventionally understood right one the vyavaharika atma is never intended here it is it is not the vyavaharika portion which is intended here but we conventionally understand it as vyavaharika atma and what do we mean by vyavaharika atma the miserable problem ridden the prarabdha impacted victimized dressed right i am the vyavaharika jeeva right and vyavaharika brahman is ishwara who doesn't have any problem and that is what normally comes to the mind and they can never be equated right so thus tayoho aikyam vachyayoho na nigadyate so the aikyam is never talked about in shastra why because they are like light and darkness and they are diagonally opposite how can jeeva and ishwara the vyavaharika atma and the vyavaharikam brahman ever be equated they cannot be not only they are not equal they are also diagonally opposite because of what anyonya viruddha dharmino ho they have got mutually opposite attributes jeeva is karyam right born some day aging and and then finally going to go whereas ishwara is nitya so one is karyam another is karanam this is called viruddha dharmino ho they are endowed with opposite attributes therefore they cannot be equal and here acharya is giving four examples so first one is khadhyoda bhanvo iva khadhyoda means a glow worm that shines in the night i think nowadays we don't see this but it is a common example that's given in the shastra so the glow worm shines in the night right exactly like a star i believe in villages you can see them plenty right but not not in the cities so a glow worm shines in the sky and bhanuhu means surya ha which also shines in the sky sky means maybe it's on top of a tree or something you imagine okay the glow worm so the glow worm also shines banuhu also shines banuhu is sun can you therefore say a glow worm and surya are one and the same never right it is ridiculous one cannot illumine even one object that is few inches away whereas the sun illumines the entire earth from millions of miles away therefore jeeva and ishwara are diagonally opposite like a glow worm and sun right so one is omniscient and another is the opposite of that then the second example is raja brutya yoho eva bhagavan is the ultimate raja the king of kings whereas jeeva the individual is brutya a servant right a slave a dependent so they just want to continue as slaves only so brutyasya brutyasya brutya so there is ishwara ishwara then guru guru student 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 like that right so as king and servant they are diagonally opposite one is ruler another another is ruled right so e aikyam is ridiculous the next one is kupa ambu rashyo ho 
Upaha means well and it's just a small storehouse of water and then if rain comes it gets filled up or otherwise it is never going to get filled up. It dries up, right? Whereas Amburashihi means it is it is basically it is the ocean which is Purnaha, right? So Apurna Jeevaha and Purna Ishwaraha can they ever be equal, right? So the teacher also knows you are correct. They are not equal. Nanigadhyate. Right? And then the fourth one. Paramanu mervoho. So the smallest substance is called Paramanu. So Tarkika Paramanu. This is not the Tarkashastra Paramanu. There is a different meaning given there. Here it is just the normal atom. The smallest substance. And meru is. Uh, we are not able to exactly place it. You take it as uh, whether it is mythological or factual, we don't know. So, take it as the a large mountain, Mount Meru, right? So, the teacher himself acknowledges that the Vyavaharika Atma and Vyavaharika Brahman can never be equal. Tayoho Aikyam Lakshi Tayoho Vachya Yoho Na. So, it is not possible through the Vachyartha, but only through the secondary meaning Lakshita Yoho. So, Avantara Vakyam. That is Avantara Vakyam means the preparatory statements that we studied all along, right? That will help us arrive at the, basically the Pada Arthaha. Basically, what is the meaning of Stvampada and Tattvada and the secondary meaning of Stvampada and secondary meaning of Tattvada. Only because of the Avantara Vakyam, that is the preparatory statements that we have studied, we will be able to unlock the real meaning, right? So, avantara vakyena padartha jnanam, maha vakyena vachyartha jnanam. So, with avantara vakyam, we first understand the pada, then of course with maha vakyam, we understand the vachyartha. So, this is the reason why we need to do all this preparatory study of avantara vakyams. Right? You can't directly teach maha vakyam and say, okay, you understood the class is over. Right? So, lakshita yoho, the secondary meaning of I, which is pure consciousness. And the secondary meaning of Brahman is also all-pervading consciousness, I. So, I, the consciousness behind my body, mind, intellect and the all-pervading consciousness behind all living beings, both are one and the same. And I am not the small consciousness confined to the body, but I am in the body and I am outside the body also, just as space is within the hall also and is opposite outside also right so what is the contradiction lakshita yoho aikyam nigadyate not for vachyartha but through lakshyartha the equality can be established don't take vachyartha so then if you take the lakshyartha the equation will fit perfectly right so acharya will now talk about how to arrive at the secondary meaning Tayor virodo yamupadhi kalpita. Tayor virodo yamupadhi kalpita. Navastava kashchidupadhi resha. Navastava kashchidupadhi resha. Ishasya maya mahadadi karanam. Ishasya maya mahadadi karanam. Jeevasya karyam shunu pancha kosha. Jeevasya karyam shunu pancha kosha. So tayoho here means vachyartha jeeva ishwara yoho. The primary meaning of the creature and the creator. How can they ever be talked about in the same vein? So, between the created and the creator, I am virodaha. If you are seeing wide differences, opposite nature, upadi kalpitaha, those contradictions, differences are costume related, costume based. And what are the costumes? I just explained. Ishasya maya is upadi of ishaha, ishwara's maya, right? And what is the upadi of the jiva? It is the body, right? So, Maya is a unique thing for the Ishwara. It's exactly like the, uh, you know, the uh, 
the firemen or some people in the workshops you will see they'll wear a coat and all their tools can be placed inside the coat itself so something like that so ishwara for ishwara maya is the coat and he can do the grand job of the creation right so what type of maya mahadadi karanam which is the ultimate cause of everything mahat represents hiranyagarbha tattva the total sukshma shariram is called mahat so he is responsible for the total sukshma shariram of course in accordance with the laws of karma so maya is the coat of bhagavan and so bhagavan is called the karana upadi right so jeevasya karyam panchakoshaha so jeevasya karyam is actually basically the panchakoshas that is jeeva's coat or upadi or jeevaha so naturally the question will be what is the karyam or product which is the costume of the individual it is panchakosha the panchakoshas are his upadi and that's also a coat it's a wonderful coat which comprises of all the tools like jnanendriyani karmendriyani panchaprana mana buddhi etc so the body basically is like the the hardware you can say and sukshma shariram is the software you can say and pancha panchaprana is the energy that is flowing through it so all of them are there for him so we are able to do all the beautiful things in this world only because of this coat right so even ultimate moksha we are able to accomplish only with the help of this karya upadi it is sufficiently equipped for this purpose so the upadi the costumes are different for jiva and ishvara right and jiva's is karya upadi ishvara is karana upadi so the creator is also now the question can come the creator is a mixture of two upahitam and upadi brahman and maya the created individual also is a mixture of two atma and anatma the sharira trayam or panchakosha so atma anatma and brahman maya right so from upadi standpoint there is a huge difference between our shariram and maya there is a difference but from the standpoint of upahitam brahman and atma both are one and the same that means 50% difference 50% non difference the difference alone seems to matter because in all transactions difference alone are prominent right so therefore the dasoham must be prominent and sohan soham must be somewhere hidden the non difference right so the answer here So that is yes, it's a natural thing that it is hidden, right? But the response which we have to understand is when you are seeing the movie. In fact, for two to three hours, you are lost in the dance, music, the fight, the fires, the characters, etc. Right? But and it appears as if you know you have to give importance to the characters to listen to and enjoy the movie, but. Vedanta asks you to think which one is satyam, which one is mitya. What remains at the end of the whole drama? The drama comes and goes, right? Matras parshas to kounte ya shi toshna sukha dukkha daha, right? Agama paino nityam. So it comes and goes. Even though we are attracted by the characters, may you remember that the movie is mitya or temporary, right? Screen alone is satyam. we have to remember that remembering that enjoy the movie if you forget the screen movie may affect you seriously right so it is very important if you forget the screen the movie can impact you very badly but remembering that the movie is satya the screen is satyam and then watching the movie right something like that so that is why in the gaudapada karika i was uh, i gave you this uh, uh, verse ஆதாவந்த என்னாஸ்தி வர்த்தமானேபி ததா சோ தேரக்டர்ஸ் ஹூ ஆர் நாட் தேர் பிஃபோர் அண்ட் ஆஃப்டர் த மூவி தே ஆர் ரியலி நாட் தேர் ரைட் திரிகாலே அப்பி திஷ்டதி இஸ் வாட் பிஃபோர் ஆஃப்டர் அண்ட் டியூரிங் தட் இஸ் ஸ்கிரீன் சிமிலர்லி ஆத்மா பிரம்மன் இஸ் த ஸ்கிரீன் வேர் அஸ் த ஷரீரத்ரயம் அண்ட் மாயா ஆர் மென்ட் ஃபார் கிவிங் அஸ் அ ட்ராமா ஆர் என்டர்டெயின்மெண்ட் அதர்வைஸ் மியர் பிரம்மன் ஆத்மா will be very boring there will be nothing no variety right so to ha- enjoy the life itself right pashyan shrinvan prishan jigran ashnan dachan swapan swashan right so but never forget 
that this is just a movie and reality is the screen, right? Therefore, Acharya says, Kaschit upadihi eshaha na vastavaha. Any one of these two upadis, maya or shariratrayam, it is not absolutely real, right? Basically, it is mithya only. So, the unreal upadi based differences can be there. Jiva Ishwara differences are based on these upadis only and the upadis themselves are unreal. So the upahitam based non-difference alone is real. So abhedaha satyaha, bedaha mitya. So advaitam is satyam, dvaitam is mitya. So that is why in the seventh mantra of Mandukya, the very important mantra, Shantam Shivam Advaitam Chaturtam Anyante Sa Atma Sa Vigneyaha. So you have to finally land at this, right? Not in any of the intermediary steps because intermediary steps will take you to Vaishnavism, Shaivism, etc. Because the difference is maintained. Dasoham Bhavana is maintained right through, right? So Shankaracharya in his uh, Karma Yoga Bhashyam clearly says that Swami Brityan Nyayaha, that is the Lord and a servant, right? So for Vishisha, Vishishta Advaitin, that is the only thing in and out, not just Karma Yoga. For an Advaitin, in Karma Yoga, we use the triangular format and also Bahama, Bhagavan has to be the savior. Bhagavan has to do this for us. So all that Upasana Yoga, Karma Yoga time, the Dasoham Bhavana is promoted. But if you die with the Dasoham Bhavana, Punar Janma is guaranteed. Acharya says this, right? So, if you say, okay, I like that, I want to live with it, then it's fine. You continue in few more Janmas, right? So, you cannot transcend the time cycle with that Dasoham Bhavana. You have to come to Soham Jnanam. So, Vastavaha word is very, very crucial, meaning Satyaha. So, the Upadi is not real. So, Upadi based differences are not real. Eta upadhi paraji vayostayo. Eta upadhi paraji vayostayo. Samyang nira sena parona jivaha. Samyang nira sena parona jivaha. Rajyam narendrasya bhatasya ketakaha. Rajyam Narendrasya Bhattasya Khetakaha Tayora Bohena Bhattona Raja Tayora Bohena Bhattona Raja So, Eto Upadi, may you note that there are two Upadis, one belonging to the created individual and the other belonging to the creator Ishwara. So, Ishwara Upadi is called Maya and the individual Upadi is called Anatma or Shariratrayam. So, therefore, Anatma and Maya, right? That is Duvachanam, that is why Etau. These two are Upadis, right? And Upadhi, you must note, because it is also again Duvachanam there. So, it means the costume, right? Parajiva yoho, tayoho. Para means Ishwara and Ishaha and Jivaha, the creator and the created individuals. They are the two Upadis and as long as you focus on the Upadi, you will only remember Dasoham. So Upadi focus will lead to differences only, not only between God and individual, but between one individual and another individual also. Everything is different, right? So, right from thumbprint or, you know, your iris, everything is different. So, temporarily set aside the Upadi. Like, exactly while when watching the movie, temporarily set aside the hero, villain, etc. And focus on the screen, right? So, then, Tayoho Samyak Nirase. When both of them are intellectually negated or set aside as Mithya, right? So, Nirase, right, means setting aside, negating. Physically, Maya cannot be removed. There's only discerning them, right? So, may you ignore them temporarily, right? So, minus Maya, the left out Brahman, the uncostumed, undressed Brahman is no more creator. 
So the creator is gone. Na paraha, na jivaha. So here also minus the, the costume, right? You will have only the uh, atma portion. This is also negated, right? So the Ishwara negation itself is presented in Vedanta Shastra in different languages. Very interesting. Depending on the maturity of the student. So Ishwara is Ishwara with only Maya costume and Maya is Mithya. Therefore, Ishwara is also Mithya. That is one way of presentation. Ishwara is Mithya. Brahman is Satyam. We can say that. Suppose somebody says, how can you say Ishwara is Mithya? Ishwara is not totally Mithya because behind the Maya costume, Brahman is there. Then therefore, actually Ishwara is Brahman. If such a question or argument comes, then we use a different version of presentation saying the Ishwara status is Mithya because the very status depends upon the Maya costume. When Maya itself is negated, the Ishwara status goes away. So Brahman, the Satyam, right, alone is there. So, Ishwara is Mithya. So, the first statement was Ishwara is Mithya, Brahman is Satyam. Second statement is Ishwaratvam. That is the status is Mithya, Brahman is Satyam. And then the third version is, we said Ishwara is a mixture of Brahman and Maya, Upadi and Upahitam. Two portions are there, we said. We can say the Upadi part of Ishwara is Mithya, Upahitam part of Ishwara is Satyam. So, it is partially Mithya, partially Satyam. So, the Maya costume is Mithya and the Upahitam part is Satyam, the Brahman. The third way of presenting, right? So, whatever works, you can use, right? Because sometimes if you say Ishwara is Mithya, it can be disturbing to normal people who don't have exposure to Vedanta, even Vishishta, Advaitins, Vaitins, etc., right? So, Satyan Rite Mituni Kritya Ahamidam Mamedam Iti Naisirgi Koyam Lokavyavaharaha. Acharya says in Adhyasa Bhashyam, all transactions require that Satya Anrita Satya Mithya mixture, right, for the Loka Vyavahara. So similarly, Jiva is Mithya or Satyam. You can say Jiva is Mithya, Atma is Satyam, first version, or you can say Jiva Tvam is Mithya, Atma is Satyam, or you can say Jiva is Partially Mithya, the Upadi part is Mithya. You can say that. Same can be extended to the world also. Jiva, Jagat, Ishwara. World is Mithya, you can say. Or the worldness is Mithya, you can say. Or the world is partially Mithya. That is the Nama Rupa part. And the existence part is Satyam, you can say. So therefore, Ishwara is Satyam or Mithya. You can give any one of these three answers. Right? So, very, very important. So, Acharya gives an example here. Narendrasya Rajyam Bhattasya Ketakaha. Right? So, two human beings. One is the king and another is a soldier. Or we can say a prime minister and a soldier. Both of them are essentially human beings. But one is called the prime minister and the other is called the soldier. And these positions are based on what? Something like a makeup. What is the makeup? Rajyam Narendrasya. For the ruler, the Upadihi, right? The Upadhi to be a king is Rajyam. Without the king, he is not, without the kingdom, he is not the king. So Rajyam has the popular meaning of kingdom or you can say kingship also. Okay, the power and position, right? So very important. So as long as that is there, he is a Narendra, a king. Similarly, Bhattasya Ketakaha, right? A soldier, an army man, the policeman, etc. He has his uniform. And along with the uniform comes the, you know, responsibilities bestowed on him also. So, entire equipment, armor, weapons, everything, whatever he has. And he is recognized as a soldier. So, as long as they enjoy their positions and their related attributes, they get their specific names and the power that goes with that. Of course, there are differences in their statuses also, right? And once, obviously, the in the case of PM, if he loses his election, he will lose this power also, right? So, tayoho apohe na bhataha na raja. So, three separate sentences, narendrasya upadihi rajyam, bhatasya upadihi ketakaha, right? And then the third one is Tayoho Apohe Sati. When both the costumes are removed, 
disrobed, divested of their powers and positions, they are what? They are normal people when they are set aside. So, apohaha means elimination. Na bhataha, na raja. There is neither soldier, the commanded one, nor king, the commander. Neither swami, nor brityaha. The dasoham relationship goes away. Thus, in karma yoga and upasana yoga, as artha bhakta, as artharti bhakta, as jignyasu bhakta, I keep crying dasoham, dasoham, until the mahavakyam clicks. Right? So, then I can address God and say, Saha aham, that is soham. O Lord, I am none other than you. So, Krishna says, right? Udara sarva evaide jnani tvatmaiva me matam. In uh, Gita chapter 7, 18th verse, jnani is not my devotee. Jnani is not my servant. Jnani is not my dasa. Jnani tu atma eva. Atma means myself. Bhagavan, Bhagavan himself declares. Jnani is myself, right? So, thus dasoham to soham is the culmination in Advaita Vedanta. And after understanding that, a jnani need not go and declare it outside because the entire world is filled with dasoham bhaktas only. So, don't go and confuse others, right? It is not required. It, they will not understand, right? So, the jnani is told, na buddhi bedam janet jnananam karma sanginam Joshayet Sarva Karmani Vidwan Yukta Samacharan. Right? The third chapter of the Gita. So don't confuse the society. Even though you are a jnani, you continue. Go to a temple. Don't just stand there saying, Soham, do namaskara. Do namaskara to your guru. Do namaskara to God. Right? Do namaskara to elders. All of that. Right? So, so there's a very famous... Uh, Verse in uh, Tattvopadesha, which is also written by Acharya. Bhavadvaitam sadakuryat kriyadvaitam na karhi chet advaitam trishulokeshu na advaitam guruna saha. Let advaitam be in your intellect, right? Bhava, in your bhavana. Kriyadvaitam na karhi chet. Be a dvaitin in your transactions, right? Basically, be a vishishta dvaitin or dvaitin. But always remember this knowledge behind yourself. So, na bhataha, na raja. Tatastutau lakshanaya sulakshyo. Tatastutau lakshanaya sulakshyo. Tayora khandai karasatva siddhaye. Tayora khandai karasatva siddhaye. Nalam jahatya na tatha jahatya. Nalam jahatya na tatha jahatya. Kintu bayar tat mikayeva bhavyam. Kintu bayar tat mikayeva bhavyam. So the vachyartha of both tatha and tvam in the Upanishadic equation will create contradiction, right? Because one will have superior attributes, the other will have inferior attributes. So that the equation will be a problem. But because the equation comes from the Upanishad, Tataha, therefore, in order to make the equation meaningful, we do Lakshanaya, the process of implication. So the cause of Ishwara's superior attributes is Maya. And the cause of jiva's inferior attributes is shariratrayam. So both of them we mentally set aside. So shodita artaha. So the revised one. So tat is brahma chaitanyam without maya. Nirguna brahma chaitanyam. And tvam is atma chaitanyam. Nirguna atma chaitanyam. This nirguna brahma chaitanyam and nirguna atma chaitanyam are here called tau. These two types of chaitanyams. Lakshanaya, by the process of implication, sulakshyau, you have to take as the lakshyartha, the special meaning. So, tau bodharupau jiva ishwarau should be taken as lakshyau, as the implied or special meaning of the words, tatu and tvam. And once you take their special meanings, tayoho akanda ekarasatva siddhaye, then you will be able to see their oneness. Akhanda, Ekarasa, undivided, indivisible consciousness, which is Ekarasam, which doesn't have even substance, attribute, division, 
and because atma and consciousness are not substance and attribute it consciousness is not an attribute consciousness is atma without substance attribute division thus one non dual consciousness will be arrived at if you take the special revised refined meaning otherwise mahavakyam will appear contradictory only that is why in advaita vedanta the mahavakyam is showcased so much because it is a central teaching whereas vishishta advaitins and dvaitins ignore that and i really don't know how and why because this is a central uh, uh, i would say set of three words tat tvam asi repeated so many times in chandokya upanishad right so even repetition as acharya says is an important reason showing that it is a central teaching and they the other dvaitins and vishishta dvaitins concentrate on the statements in the upanishads where jiva and ishvara are differentiated so at the vyavaharika level they have to be differentiated because we have to manage our lives only that way right as a student who is you know even all the way up to a jignyasu bhakta so how do they look at it so they have sa atma tat tvam asi right so they take this um, tat as atat saha atma atat tvam asi means we should read it as not tat tvam but atat and by using different methods they interpret the mahavakyam but anyway i just wanted to also tell you that there are innovative ways by which they can interpret this as meaning something totally different so tayoho akanda ekara sattva siddhaye therefore for arriving at the equality of brahma chaitanyam and atma chaitanyam you have to come to their special meanings only now comes a brief mention of the three types of lakshana or implication this will be employed only when the primary meaning doesn't fit in we should always apply the first common popular meaning god means god jiva means jiva right so when you ask how are you right you shouldn't say aham atma right sarvagnya you, you don't say that akarta bhukta etc you will introduce yourself right because i am referring to a person as an individual with the three bodies right so no you cannot say anything else you have to introduce yourself as so and so only so you should know when the lakshana should be applied so lakshana must be applied only when the teacher is teaching not all times so first apply the primary meaning in any context and only if it does not fit in apply lakshana okay now i tried to simplify this as much as possible with a picture also let me now see if i can explain this so the lakshana is of three types jahati lakshana ajahati lakshana and ubhaya lakshana we'll come to ubhaya lakshana later so ubhaya means jahati ajahati combined lakshana so we'll now take up jahati lakshana suppose a few people have assembled in the house of one person they are enjoying their company and drinking coffee and while they have coffee a new member joins the group right so they ask or the host asks him would you like to have a cup of coffee okay right and so they ask the the host asks this person would you like to have a cup of coffee what does he say no i already consumed two cups before coming here okay now let us analyze the statement i have consumed two cups okay he he only says i've had two cups i've consumed two cups so what is the primary meaning of the word cup cup is a container either porcelain or paper or plastic so i have consumed two cups literally if you take it it means the person has consumed the containers also but normally the human being consumes the content inside the container not the container right so from the context we know that the word cup here means what the content of the cup namely coffee because that is the context therefore he means i have already consumed two cups of coffee so thus the word cup in this context means coffee right so the vachya artha is container the lakshya artha is the content the coffee the drink 
Now, how did we arrive at Lakshyartha? What happened to Vachyartha, the primary meaning? Based on what happens to the primary meaning, we arrive at a special secondary meaning. So, the name Jahati Lakshana is given here. What are we doing here? The primary meaning of the word cup is cup. That primary meaning we are fully dropping. So, while arriving at the Lakshyartha, the primary meaning we are dropping altogether because the person doesn't consume the cup, right? So, having dropped the primary meaning, you arrive at the content, which is related to the primary meaning because the container is related to the content, supporter and supported. So, you take a relevant secondary meaning, which is connected with the primary meaning, but after dropping the primary meaning totally. Thus, you take a secondary meaning coffee, which in this context is connected with the primary meaning cup. And the primary meaning cup is totally dropped. And then when he says I've consumed two cups, it means I've consumed two cups of coffee. Thus, since the primary meaning is dropped, we use the word jahati. Okay. So, in Sanskrit, jahati is derived from the root ha. Right. It is a shatranta rupam, present active participle. So, jahati, feminine gender, because lakshana is feminine. Jahati is feminine gender. Ha means to drop. So, dropping the primary meaning is what it's intended here, the meaning. Therefore, the primary meaning is dropped in this lakshana. Therefore, it is called Jahati lakshana. So, primary meaning dropping implication, right? An implication in which a primary meaning is dropped, right? So, when he says I've consumed two cups without even knowing Jahati lakshana, we assume immediately that he doesn't have the cup. He only eat the coffee inside the cup. Very often we hear this usage, except that Shatra is now pointing this out to us. For instance, in the newspaper, sometimes you see the chair objected to the, mem to the member, right? So, the chair doesn't talk. It's basically referring to the chair person. So, Jahati Lakshana is something that we very commonly use. Only the word we don't know and sounds very complex, right? So, if you remember this, I had two cups and then, you know, equate it with coffee, you will remember Jahati Lakshana. Now, next is Ajahati Lakshana. I am ever thankful to Swamiji for having simplified this so much. Huh? So, Ajahati Lakshana. So, we have to talk about that. Now, coming here, suppose the person says, when you say, do you want to have a cup of coffee? He says, I do not want coffee. I already had. And can you get me some water? So, the new entrant asks the host, can you get me some water? So, now the host has to bring water. But water is a liquid. If it is a solid like a book, then you can just bring the book. But here it is water. So, the water requires a container. So, the guest has not mentioned the cup. He only said, get me some water. So, the host understands that if I take the vachyartha, the primary meaning, I should bring water alone for him. That's not possible. So, he understands it as water along with the container. So, he understands Lakshanaya by implication. So, he takes a cup or any container and pours water into that and brings the container come water. So, water, the Vachyartha is there. Water he does bring but not water alone. So, he adds the container into the meaning of the water and whenever anybody says bring water, we must understand bring water in a container. So, that way alone we can bring. So, that way alone the visitor can receive it also, right? So, in this context, water means water plus container. Thus, you have to add something to the vachyartha and the vachyartha, the water also should not be dropped. So, you don't drop here. You don't apply jahati lakshana. If you apply jahati lakshana, what will happen? You will bring only the cup without the water, right? That's not what we, is intended here. So, here we have to bring... You have to add something more without dropping. Retaining the Vachyartha, you add something more. So, this Lakshana is no, is called a adding Lakshana, basically. So, primary meaning is not drop. Therefore, the primary meaning non-dropping implication. In short, it is called non-dropping implication because we are not dropping the water, right? So, it is Ajahati Lakshana. Right? So, in the first example, if you use Ajahati Lakshana, in I have consumed two cups when he says, if you take Vachyartha, then he has consumed the cups also. Right? That's what you take. So, Ajahati Lakshana won't work in the first case. 
and in this case jahati lakshana won't work right so you have to think through this and invite this maybe listen to it once or twice more right now for the mahavakyam this is really not required and that is what the teacher is saying here right nalam jahatyana tata jahatya both these explanations jahati and ajahati will not work right in the Mahavakyam. Therefore, you have to go in for a third Lakshana, which is Jahati Ajahati Lakshana. That means dropping is also there. Non-dropping is also there of the primary meaning. That means what? Part of the primary meaning is dropped and part of the primary meaning is retained. Right? So, from the standpoint of that part which is dropped, it will be Jahati Lakshana. From the standpoint of the part that is not dropped, it will mean Ajahati Lakshana. The best example is what? Water is ocean. Which Lakshana will we use? The third part. The name and form part of the wave and ocean. Suppose you take, uh, not water and ocean, take wave and ocean. Wave is also water. Ocean is also water. Right? So when you take that and drop the name and form, right? Wave includes Nama Rupa, name form and water. So, name form part you drop, Jahati Lakshana. Water part you don't drop, Ajahati Lakshana. So, similarly for the ocean, you drop the Nama Rupa part, right? Retain the water part, right? So, therefore, wave is up ocean. We apply Jahati, Ajahati Lakshana. But here, Acharya is going to take another example, right? He's going to, so now we have to explain this example also. He is going to take the example of Soyam Devadattaha. A very classic Shastrik example. And to understand Shankaracharya's example, I thought I will give you my own example. Okay. Interestingly, in this class, about uh, uh, maybe 10 classes before, uh, somebody actually reached out to me, one of the students, very surprised after seeing me, saying, are you my uh, classmate? Okay. And it so happened, he's not there on the uh, in the class today. Otherwise, I would have introduced uh, him to you. So, his name is Raju Venkatraman. So, subsequently, what happened? We decided to have a Google Meet where I could meet him along with another friend, right? So, we had a Google Meet. So, I connected a third friend. His name is Nirmal. So, Raju Venkatraman is the student on of Viveka Chudamani who recognized me. Now, I have a third friend, Nirmal, a classmate, right? So, on the meet. Now, what happened? I, I tell Nirmal, hey, do you remember during our lab sessions, we were a group, right? And we used to dissect rats. I haven't told Nirmal till then that I'm going to be bringing Raju Venkatraman on the call, right? So, I'm asking Nirmal, do you remember during our lab sessions, we were a group and we used to, you know, have these biology labs where we used to dissect rats, etc. Or we used to have, you know, the chemi chemistry lab, we used to do this. And then do you remember, there used to be small groups, right? And then I said, do you remember this Raju who used to do experiments with us, right? And then Nirmal says, oh, what is the connection between that Raju? Here you got some other guy here in front of me. And then you are saying that you are talking about Raju. And he was the, our lab mate, etc. Right? Then I say, there is no connection indeed. That Raju who was, right, in the lab is this person in the Google Meet, right? Then Nirmal explains, oh my God, what a change. Raju is totally different. That Raju and this Raju, right? Why? Why does he say that? Because that Raju, obviously, 40 years back, must have had black hair, jet black hair. And, you know, a young boy who was in school, 11th or 12th standard. And now, the same Raju Venkatraman is completely bald and Nirmal cannot recognize him, right? So, if you look at the Vachyartha, the direct meaning, there will be so many problems. First problem is the pronoun itself. That is, is used for something remote, right? In terms of time and space, we studied in a school, KVIT. That was the school and it was 40 years ago. So, that refers to remote time and space. And this refers to proximate, close by time and space, right? I am saying this is Raju and this is that Raju. That itself is a problem, right? So, this and that pronouns can never be combined. They are contradictory. 
So what is far away cannot be close by, right? But we have combined that, right? That is contradiction one. The second contradiction is that that Raju was a young boy with lots of jet black hair and the physical features were such that he was young, youthful, etc. And today, right, he's totally different, right? So physical features are totally different. So how can that youthful Raju and this Raju on the Google Meet ever be equated, right? So this equation is to be understood only by giving up the Vachyartha and all those things which are contradictory between that childhood Raju and this Raju. So what are the contradictory things? That and this have to be given up. Time and space you have to remove, past and present. All the physical features which are contradictory you remove. Having removed all the contradictory features, if you see the person behind, then Raju will say, I am he. So he refers to that one continuous entity called the person, Yakti Matram, which is behind the physical features. Why? Because we are referring to that Jeevaha who is behind the variable body, not to the body itself. Dehi no smin yata dehe kaumaram yavvanam jara. So there is a Dehi consisting of sukshma shariram, karana shariram, chaitanyam, etc. There is an individual behind the changing physical features. The individual we understood when we equate, when we, un we understand when we equate the youthful and aging person, right? The same two Rajus when we equate, we understand that individual. So in the Vachyartha, the contradictory features we remove, set aside, but we do not remove the person. We retain the individual behind the contradictory features. And since we retain a part from the standpoint of Vyakti, the individual, it is Ajahati Lakshana. Whereas from the standpoint of contradictory physical features which are ignored, it is called Jahati Lakshana. This Jahati Ajahati Lakshana we apply and whenever we equate a past and present person, like even when we are equating the dreamer and waker, we are using this same Lakshana. So I think this is a lot for today. I'll stop here and allow you to mull over this before we get on to the profound meaning of the verses in the coming classes. Purnamad Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti Shanti Shanti